Hello everyone, TB709 here on the No Limit YouTube channel page for this week's Deck Doctor segment. This week we're going to be covering Bilipino 76's Super Defense Robot deck. Um, apparently uh, Bilipino is someone who does not like to play meta, so that's kind of cool. Um, I've always kind of liked playing decks that are um, a little bit different from what the meta usually, you know, like what you normally see in the meta. So it's kind of cool to see that some people are playing some interesting decks as well. Um, and Super Defense Robos are something that I used to kind of um, mess around with because I have a whole bunch of them sitting in my commons and I always thought they were kind of a cool little archetype. Um, it'd be kind of cool if they got some more support too, but I mean, uh, there's not much else to really add to it, I guess, except for another way to maybe get Elephant into your hand or have another level 8 that you can summon off of the other guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's just get into his build and we'll get into the fixed build and cover the changes and blah blah blah. blah. Whatever. <clears throat> so starting off with the monsters, we have three super defense robot elephant. Um, basically your heart and soul of the deck, because uh, you know making rain kites is a thing. Um, continuing on, we have three myth or mythic water dragon, um, two machina cannon, one uh, gores the emissary of darkness, one tidal dragon ruler of waterfalls, three machina fortress, one red ox dragon ruler of boulders, um, three super defense robo Leo or robot Leo, I guess is. The actual name. Um, three tin goldfish, two super defense robot monkey, uh, two max C's, and two effect veilers. Uh, spells we have three galaxy queens light. Um, for anyone who does not know what this card does, target one face up level seven or higher monster you control. The levels of all other face up monsters you currently control become the level of that monster until the end phase. Um, so you can make any of your little guys or whatever the level eight or level seven to make you know interesting whatever rank plays right. Um, so yeah. Just felt like I needed to explain that in case people didn't know what the card actually did. Um, so continuing on, we have one Dark Hole, two Iron Calls, three Upstart Goblins, one Book of Moon, one Limited Removal, and three Forbidden Lance. Um, no traps. Uh, he in, or in his message to me, he also indicated that he didn't want to play like any kind of um, trap, like defensive back row kind of stuff, just because he doesn't want to deal with um, Ice Hand like crashing into something, blowing up back row, and then bringing out Fire Hand and blowing up stuff and crap like that I guess um, I, people play differently so I mean it's kind of a thing um, and I tried to build off of that because it didn't seem like he might have wanted to change that um, anyway continuing on we have extra deck here um, one crimson blader one star spark dragon because he's playing the veilers um, two go or googly eyes drum dragon I always like to call it garbage eyes fat dragon just because it's a great name I don't really see why they had to change it but whatever um, two felgran or divine dragon knight felgran um, one number 15 gimmick puppet giant grinder one mecha fanaby straco sack one number 11 big eye two gear dragon x one ev gishki marrow geist one number 101 silent on our arc, one abyss dweller, and one wind up zen mains because two level threes here. Um, so I mean those are things. Um, a lot of interesting plays that you can do with the super defense robos. Uh, it's just a really derpy deck if you play it. Um, if you play it right, because it does require a bit of you know, like actual know how to kind of play a deck that's you know whatever. Uh, so anyways, we're just gonna get into the fixed build here. Starting off with the monsters, we have three Elephant, three uh, Mythic Water Dragon, one uh, Gear Spring Spirit. Um, I know that the name up there says Clockwork Shikigami, but it's actually in English Gear Spring Spirit for anyone that needs to look it up. Um, three Machina Cannon, three Machina Fortress, one Red Ox Dragon Ruler of Boulders, three Machina Gear Frame, three Super Defense Robot Leo, um, three Super Defense Robot Monkey, three Card Card D. Um, spells we have three Trade In, one Dark Hole. Three Upstart Goblins, two Pot of Duality, uh, one Book of Moon, one Limited Removal, and three Forbidden Lance. Uh, extra deck, we have uh, two Garbage Eyes Fat Dragon, because that name's cooler. Um, one number 40 Gimmick Puppet of Strings, two Felgrand the Divine Dragon Knight. I'm just going to go by the name on the picture, because that's what I was looking at. Um, one Alsei the Sylvan High Protector, one uh, number 15 Gimmick Puppet uh, Giant Grinder, two Mecha Fan of East Drago Sack, one number 11 Big Eye. Two Gear Gigan X, one number 101 Silent Honor Arc, one Abyss Dweller, and one Wind Up Zen Mains. Um, first thing to note, he also said that he didn't have um, access to Excite Knight, because I guess this is more of an IRL build. Um, and this should still be fairly cheap to build unless you don't have a second Draco Sack IRL, then I guess it's something. Um, and if you really don't want to play the second Draco Sack, you can probably find some other interesting cards to play. Um, 
but I mean, there's a new um, Galaxy Eyes or Tachyon. It's, it's not. A, I don't remember if it's a Tachyon Dragon or not. It's the 4000 uh, Ultra Rare from the most recent set. Um, it's kind of big. It's also a rank eight that you can just make for whatever. Um, something to consider if you really don't want to play the Draco Sack. It's something that I was testing, but um, the fact that he requires to be used for a machine exceed. That's part of the reason why I didn't have it in here, and it's why I have this in here. So I'm just going to explain that now. Um, so yeah, we already covered the main, the main deck and extra deck. Um, so things that we dropped from the main deck from the original build, Gores, Tidal, and the three Goldfish, as well as two Maxi and two Valor for the monsters that we dropped. Um, the spells that we dropped, we dropped the three Galaxy Queen's Light and the two Iron Calls, and from the extra deck we dropped the Crimson Blader, a Stardust Spark Dragon, and a Marrowgeist. Um, things we added, we added in the Gear Spring Spirit, we added in a third cannon, we added in three gear frames, and we added in a third monkey. Um, for spells, we added in three trade ins, we added in two pot of duality. Um, so. Things that we're gonna do, we're gonna cover this in order. Um, things that we added: uh, Gear Spring Spirit. Uh, I wanted to play more than one copy of this, but at the same time, the odds of you having like a Water Dragon or a you know a Red Ox in your graveyard late game, or possibly even something from your extra deck in your graveyard, it kind of can be a very dead card. But I've actually opened it early game quite a few times whenever it comes to testing for this. I've opened it quite a few times. Uh, on top of that, even if it's like a dead card late game, you have things like trade in to get it out of your hand. Not to mention it's also still a level 8 machine, so you can discard it for Machine of Fortress as well. Um, it's just a decent card to have, even as just a one of. And even though you may not be able to use it late game because you have a Water Dragon or a Red Ox or something from your extra deck in your graveyard, um, like I said, you can still get it out of your hand with things like your Fortress or trade in um so it's not a terrible card to play as a good one of um so we also added in a third cannon part of the reason for this is because we added in gear frames and we also are now playing trade in it is a searchable level eight off of gear frame so if you find yourself needing to draw cards and you have like nothing else that you can really do summoning gear frame or just having one of these in your hand as well as having a trade in it gives you something to kind of play with um on top of that you can use it as like an engrave fuel for this and um for monkey as well being able to add something back to your hand so i mean it's kind of just kind of you know good to have three of it's a level eight that you can kind of just drop for free um and by free i mean you have to discard a machine but i mean you can still kind of just do it and have a 2200 wall for whatever reason um and having three again kind of helps with the gear frame trade-in thing it's kind of like summoning stratos searching malicious and then playing d draw it's kind of one of those types of deals um so yeah, the other thing I kind of have to explain, which is the next thing, is the gear frame. It allows you to search into this and this a lot faster. Uh, not to mention you can equip it to things like the Fat Dragon or whatever to prevent it from being destroyed at least once. Um, so I mean there's that. It, just being able to get into your fortresses and your cannons when you need them is really nice to have. And like I said, being able to fuel your draw power with your trade-in is really good. Um, so I mean there's that. The next thing that we added was the third monkey. Uh, playing two, I can understand part of the reason why you would, but at the same time, you want to be able to summon either him or him and go into um, Elephant. Um, being able to have the or the ability to do that as fast as possible requires the three monkey. Uh, on top of that, you can banish something from your graveyard in order to get a um, super defense robot from your grave or your grave back to your hand, which is always useful if you want to use a Leo on a following turn or if you need to get Elephant from your graveyard back to your hand so you can use it with maybe another Leo or another monkey on a later turn. Um, it's just something you kind of want to make sure you have. And you want to be able to draw into being able to do into like multiples of your super defense robots. That way you can use them both and make them exceed or whatever. So playing three is something that I feel is necessary for each of the defense robots. Um, next thing we added was card card D. Um, this uh, trade in and upstart and duality. They're all cards that help one. You, the way this deck really needs to work is it needs to be able to get into a way to summon one of your lower robots as well as your elephant. Um, Either that or being able to just make an exceed play with something like 
being able to drop your cannon and then dropping this or you know being able to make a rank 7 play things like that it needs to be able to draw into it and since you're not playing a very defensive version of the deck it's going to be more of a speedy version and playing card card D allows you to draw into a couple cards yes you'll probably take a little bit of damage which kind of made me consider trag but the room was tight so the way it works as it is whenever um, it came to testing it actually played pretty well without the trags um, and the damage isn't that big a deal. You're not playing things like Soul Charge or anything to have to worry about life points either. So those are all kind of things. Um, on top of that, uh, we already, I already, I think I've already really explained this. We have so many level 8s. We have level 8, level 8, level 8, level 8. So I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> You have enough level 8s in here to play 3, and not to mention, again, you can search it out. My, my voice is just going to shit right now. <clears throat> but um, I don't really feel like I need to explain trade in any further than I already have. It's kind of obvious why it's in here. Um, the last thing that I need to explain from the main deck, aside from my voice going to hell, <clears throat> is Pot of Duality. Pot of Duality pairs really nicely with Card Card D. On top of that, it allows you to filter through your deck to try and get a card that you may or may not need. I mean, sure, you might reveal cards that you don't need, but you can find something that can be definitely useful either on the following turn or something that could be useful in that moment. Like, if you are going to actually attack and you don't have any intention of special summoning and you end up revealing something like a limiter or lance and you want to attack, you know, you can just get key cards like that. Um, being able to get things to, you know... It's good for getting into draw power too. Like if you play duality, reveal card car, and you already can't special summon, you can summon card car. If you reveal trade and you have a level eight in your hand that you don't need, you can pitch it and draw two cards. If you hit the upstart and you want to filter through your deck some more, then you can use upstart to get through your deck as well. Stuff like that. It's just kind of a really good card to get to those key things that you may or may not need. And just like it, it's either get key cards that you need or good cards that you could just have just to have. Um, so I mean. Those are kind of things. Um, I also kind of tested around with moving MSTs from your side deck into your main deck. Um, so if you find yourself not really enjoying duality, I kind of recommend putting like two MSTs in your main deck, just because it's really good for taking care of things like Fiendish Chain as well as um, other remaining back row. If you happen to force them to play their back row, like if you force them to bottomless or something, you can take out their remaining back row because most people usually set like two or three other cards. Um, at most, whatever, like with the, the one that they either use or you blow up. So, I mean, being able to take care of a good chunk of their back row by forcing it and using MSTs and just being able to respond with crap with MST is just overall really good. Um, just being able to take out their potentially threatening defensive back row is a thing. Um, but I do recommend trying the dualities. They're just really good. Extra deck we added in, number 40, Gimmick Puppet of Strings. <clears throat> It's a machine 3000 attack monster that requires only two level 8s, so you don't have to make it with Elephant or, or Elephant. I, I keep thinking Elephant for some fucking reason. Um, but you don't have to make it with him. You can make it with this, you can make it with this, or this. So, I mean, any of these work. Um, so you don't have to feel like you need to summon Elephant to make it. But um, it's there to also act as something that Elephant can make. Um, not to mention that if you happen to get its effect off, it's pretty disgusting. Especially with Fat Dragon, because if Fat Dragon's on the field with a material and it gets blown up by Gimmick Puppet of Strings, you can trigger Fat Dragon's effect to bring itself back from the graveyard so you can inflict the 500 damage and destroy their monsters with this card as well. And, um, you know, it's just really good for things like that. Um... Next thing I added in was Alse, the Sylvan High Protector. It's a good 3200 wall that you could detach, potentially a middle card from the top of your deck, which has some use with a few other cards, um, like Monkey and uh, Red Ox, of course, um, as well as Fortress. Um, and you can put a card from your opponent's field to the, either the top or the bottom of their deck. So, I mean, that's kind of a thing. Um, I added in a second Draco Sack as well. I don't think I added anything else. Um, the second Draco Sack's kind of there just to add to what this deck already does, which puts out uh, monsters that put a lot of pressure on the opponent. Um, Felgrand, they have to work around its effect to protect itself or other cards. Uh, Garbage Eyes, Fat Dragon can bring itself back from the graveyard so long as it has a material and, there, and that there's a super defense robo in your graveyard that you can banish to use its effect. Um, Sylvan, you know, protector here, 3200 wall that it takes a lot of work to get over. There's also Silent Honor Arc and Zen Mains, as well as the 2500 defense Elephant, the fortress that they don't want to destroy at all, things like that. Like, it's, this deck likes to put a lot of, um, hard to get rid of monsters on, onto the board, and Dracosex one of those cards. And believe it or not, this deck makes it pretty, um, 
frequently. It, it makes it really, it makes it often. And in general, it's just a really good card to just put more pressure on the opponent and being like, okay, I have a 2600 bead stick that I can either distribute a Mega Phantom Beast Monster to destroy something, or I can just put tokens on the field to make Dracosec even more difficult to get off the field. So, um, yeah, I don't know if I really need to explain anything else because I didn't make any other changes to the deck. Um, Galaxy Queen's Light seemed like a card that was just uh, a card that you didn't really need to play. It felt like a card that you were playing because you weren't getting into other key cards fast enough, and that's part of the reason why things like trade-ins, dualities, and upstarts are in the deck, as well as card car, of course. Um, Iron Call, I actually tried other cards over it. Um, duality was my choice over them, of course, but I also ended up testing things like Inferno Reckless Summon, um, being able to summon this, summon whatever, and um, like if you summon this, you can play Inferno Reckless, bring out two more from your deck, and then you can use one of them to make one of the other monk or the Leo or the monkey eight, and then you can put out two Garbage Eyes, Fat Dragon, just because you can, um, stuff like that. So if you want to try something else that's interesting, Inferno Reckless is also another card. Um, Valor, Valor, I kind of agreed with, but at the same time, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about it. Um, in testing, it was okay, but at the same time, I found myself needing other cards as well. Um, so I kind of feel like they shouldn't be mained. Um, breakthrough skill is also something that I rec would recommend playing more so over it, just because Ophion can be a major pain in your ass um, if you happen to run into that matchup. Um, so I mean, I would recommend siding them if not trying to find room in the main deck for them. Um, not sure what I would really drop considering the build feels solid already as it is, um, but uh, something to kind of consider. Um, Maxi should be sided, I think. Uh, against very specific matchups. So, I mean, like the Goldfish as well. Goldfish, there was only a few cards to really go with. Um, you really don't want to have to use your gear frame for it, and you don't really want to use your Leo for it either. But I can understand why you would, you know, I guess play them. But um, the way that the fixed build seems to work, it just seems to work really well, at least for what the deck actually is. So, um, yeah, like I said, I don't really feel like I need to explain anything else. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments about it. Um, if you would like to have a deck fixed in the future, be sure to message it here on the No Limit YouTube channel, um, and hopefully we can get to it in the upcoming weeks. Um, so, without further stalling out this video, until next time, this is Team 709 signing out.